We have here a uh, Farfisa which came in the door and its symptoms are that we um, don't hear any sound. I mean nothing. No amplifier hum, no hiss, nothing. We uh, did a double check on the output cable because these here come completely permanently attached and read seven tenths of an ohm which is good enough to be a short circuit to us. Uh, we then removed the cable and measured 39 ohms across the output of the preamp, which does not seem right, but it's possible. The uh, measurement of 3.6 ohms on the, the removed cable uh, suggests that the short was at one end, and that's possibly where the, some splices seem to have occurred, but we still don't have anything, and um, even with a new cable, so there seems to be a second issue involved, and uh, that is with the preamp or power supply or something else, uh, because we should have had some noise. We're going to investigate that next. Okay, since we suspected um, a bad power supply, we're going to have to remove the inside of the case from the exterior case. So in order to do that, you have to move the power supply back because the uh, tone and volume knobs on the back are going to hit the uh, cutout. So what we're going to do is we're going to come down here and remove the screws. There's two on each side. Well, actually, we're not going to remove them. We're going to loosen them. And it's on. there's a cutout on the plate. And this allows us to slide this back in order to clear. Okay, once we do that, there's also four screws, uh, two, four, six screws, uh, wing nut screws on the bottom of the case. Uh, if you open up your case, you'll see them. They're long two inch wing nut screws. You must remove all six of those. And then once you do that, you're, you're ready to lift up, usually. Okay, we found out that someone went in there and screwed the power, su uh, the power supply back in and the inside of the case to the exterior case with these um, drywall screws. And that's why we weren't able to get them out right away, which those are not stock. Uh, by, like I said before, by the six wing nut screws underneath and by the four uh, power supply screws, this should be able to lift out, no problem. And that's how you work on these things. So we're gonna move this over to the bench and uh, we'll show you what we're gonna do next from there. Okay, upon further inspection, we have found two shorted capacitors in the power supply. With these shorted capacitors, we weren't getting our voltages to the 12AX7s. So what we're doing is we're replacing the capacitors, the uh, high voltage uh, electrolytics. And we suspect we'll have um, sound after we're finished with this. Better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're replacing the original 16 microfarad capacitors at 350 to 400 volts with 22 microfarad capacitors, a little more than usual. Uh, this will cut down on the hum slightly and they are at 450 volts. And uh, the, uh, the axial lead capacitor is uh, being replaced as in the same position that the old one was there's not much room in the chassis.
there we go. So, let's see here. How's it? How are the notes sounding? Okay, we're missing a footage there. 16 foot. There also. Okay, we'll have to go through the ta the tabs. And we'll show you how to check each each note with the tabs and um, looks like our job's not finished yet. All right, we've got the scope. Uh, this is ground over here on this pin. And um, these are some voltages. Uh, this is uh, your output of the dividers. And each one should be progressively lower. And that so far is the case. And all the dividers on this particular card are running, although they're running rather crudely. Um, that's the F sharp card. There is one card for each of the uh, 12 in the octave. And as you can see, the frequency increases every time by a factor of two. So this particular one has all of its dividers running. Now that doesn't mean that the contact is making at the uh, the keyboard end. The Farfisa is known for having contacts fall out uh, after being dropped. So it is possible if you're missing a particular footage that it is not the divider. And this particular Farfisa, you can tell from all the rust on all the coils and everything else, has been in a very wet location. Or at least been stored someplace where water or humidity was an issue. Okay, so what we found out is the divider board is dividing on every octave, but like Greg said, inside the contact right here is completely broken. Um, this obviously has taken a hard fall and the contact spring has completely snapped in half. Uh, the way it is now, it's impossible to fix without completely replacing the contact itself. So we're going to see if we can give that a go. Okay, so here we are underneath the Beast, the Farfisa uh, Combo Compact. And what we found is, is that, like we said, the contact is broken, literally in half. But now that I'm under here looking, I want to make note, I want you to see something. Look at the contacts up here on this, on this animal. Look at this. This is a homemade one. They're all broken. This one's a safety pin. This is a first. I, I love this one. Someone's used a safety pin as an actuator. This one's just hanging completely loose and missing the contact. This is a nightmare. This is going to be a big job. Um, so now let's move back over to the one in question on the F sharp. So what we want to do is we want to take our soldering iron and we want to heat that up because the contact is held in there by by solder. Once we heat it up we can pull it out. And we take our new contact like this and we reinstall it in the same hole. Actually, I did that wrong. I'm going to take this back out, and we want to put it through the hole first. I'm 
I know it's tough for the camera to see this, but oops. We're doing the best we can. This is a tight opening. Okay, there we go. Now it's in the hole. Now we can reinstall this up into there. Okay, there we go. Now I actually have to push that up even higher. Okay, once that's in there and solder's dry, now we can <clears throat> go over and move it, move the actuator onto the spring. Which, again, is hard. Okay.